Kia ora and welcome to Busters. Now, if I was truly worried about safety, I would not be building a DIY lithium ion battery. In fact, I would certainly not be pulling a perfectly good lithium ion battery apart. But I am. However, um, I'd rather not have it too exciting. So what I've done is I have wrapped some of my tools. Um, this is the only socket I will need for the process. Uh, socket driver, a ratchet, and a spanner. Now, oh, and, and, and a screwdriver, which is already quite nicely insulated. So it's time to pull this battery apart. I'm going to start right here at the back of the battery before disconnecting anything else because this will effectively break the battery pack in half meaning there's no power potential on the front terminals. So with this link removed I now no longer have a working battery pack. So this case isn't earthed at all so it's isolated from both terminals. I'm now going to take out the negative terminal here and get that out the way and next I will disconnect the negative end of the battery. Now I'm literally going to cut off the sensing wires because I won't need them anymore. And that's the entire BMS removed. So now I just have the remaining um, joiners and the positive wiring to remove and get this crap out of here which looks like it's glued in. With all but the extreme positive terminals disconnected now uh, this battery is relatively safe. Um, bearing in mind, of course, that dropping a tool across the top of here is uh, probably about as exciting as any battery could get. Um, these are completely unregulated, so maybe safe's not the word. But at least I can take these terminals out um, with minimal risk. Interesting to note um, the torque on these, these are. These are maybe M6 bolts and uh, they're only good for a very light torque. Some of them actually appeared to be over torqued and uh, some of them were really quite loose. And these bloody things are glued in so I'm going to have to kind of tear them out. I think I'll just slip my handy little battery protector plate in to uh, protect it. Right, so I've got the charging and BMS system off and now I have the cells bare here. There's a couple of red flags that um, I'm slightly worried about uh, beyond the you know, relatively dodgy looking wiring. Um, when I check their balance, uh, each block, whilst it had a balance set on it, each block's quite different. So, these three here are 3.367, pretty consistently, 3.367, where these three here are 3.347 that's, that's a fair way out really these three here are 3.37 or 3.338 These ones here are uh, 
So that's quite a swing from uh, 3.328 to 3.367 I mean that's nearly four hundredths of a volt um, out of balance already now perhaps even more concerning is looking at the little tag on the battery let's see if I can zoom in there's an ATL VOD5NO and it is 3.2 volts at 256 watt hours now that's kind of interesting um, like 256 watt hours at 3.2 volts that's an 80 amp hour cell not a 90 amp hour cell so three of them in parallel would be 240 amp hours as a total battery capacity not 270 that's in direct contrast to what this thing says I mean it still represents pretty bloody good value for these cells assuming I can get them to balance nicely but um, interesting this battery pack does not appear to be what it claims to be some say if it sounds too good to be true, maybe it's too good to be true. But I don't think this is a 270 amp hour battery. This is a nice stainless steel case, however. Now taking it out of the case, um, while it appears to be supported with this kind of foam padding, this actually looks like that's just around the top. And perhaps just for show, it's actually held together, spaced apart and held together with cardboard and sellotape. Now, curiouser and curiouser, the way these are packed together, they actually have an air gap between each cell. Now, uh, my understanding is that these actually prefer to be under compression. It stops them swelling, and what do you know? These are swollen. They're smaller than advertised. They're really quite poorly put together. And to be honest with you, none of this is a surprise. When you look at the price, these are about a third. These cost about a third of what they should be worth. So, probably still represent okay value for money. I'm going to play around with these cells. I'll pull the rest of them out and see how we get on. If I can get them to balance upright, I will assemble them into a decent sized battery and um, compress them up nicely and see how they actually work. Because they still might be pretty bloody good for what I need. So this is weird. This is right in the middle of the battery and it's dirty. And this here is confirmation that these are not 90 amp hour batteries and this is not 270 amp hour battery pack. So here we have it, 2480 amp hour, 3.2 volt cells. These 10 have little or no swelling. The remaining 14 have varying degrees of swelling, some of them quite bad. So we'll see how we get on. That's the disassembly done. Um, kind of a little bit gutted that they're not what I was hoping but still pretty happy with what I have got obviously I have no comeback really because I've <laughs> destroyed the batteries I bought um, so I kind of knew I did I entered into that knowing what I was doing um, I bought them knowing the risks involved and I pulled them apart knowing the risks involved so whilst there's nothing I can do about it I'm still pretty comfortable with where I am at the moment and I have a whole ton of lithium ion phosphate battery cells 
which now I can seriously play with. So I've, um, I've actually stuck some of the jumper plates back on just to parallel half of them together to start that process. Um, I need to make up some more jumpers. But anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully you're keen to see what happens with these babies next. So click all the buttons, like and subscribe and all that jazz and we'll see you again soon. Take care. Matiwa.